Today on Applied Science, I'd like to show you my entry for the 2018 Flashing Light Prize. So first off, you can see we've got an Aerolux neon light bulb with the cool flowers and even green leaves inside it. And uh, as it twirls around, you can see that it's turning on and off, of course, because it's the Flashing Light Prize. However, if I take a clear piece of plastic and put it between the light source that's on the left and the bulb, you can see it doesn't flash anymore. So there's actually something very trick going on with how I'm turning the bulb on and off. Um, it's spinning around and you might think, well, there might just be a, a physical switch contact that's doing it underneath, but that's, that's not it. It's actually the light. So let's back up so you can see how this is working. Okay, here's the whole setup. On the right, we've got a DC power supply that's running a gear motor uh, that's connected up underneath the light bulb. And then we've got a variac here. So I've got standard 120 volt AC coming into the variac and then a slightly lower voltage going to the bulb. And I've got the bulb mounted in one of these fire starter uh, rotary outlet adapters. And then we've got a really strong ultraviolet light on the other side that's used for looking at um, uh, gels in electrophoresis. So it's actually quite a lot of ultraviolet coming out there. And then the real trick, how did I get the bulb to turn on only half the time? I sprayed it with sunscreen. So sunscreen blocks ultraviolet light to keep you from getting suntanned or sunburned. And um, it's also very effective at keeping the ultraviolet from getting into the bulb and causing it to burn. The reason that I need the Variac is that the voltage has to be almost high enough to get the neon bulb burning, but not quite high enough to actually get it started because we want the ultraviolet light to be the thing that pushes it over. So the adjustment is really sensitive. If I turn it just a little bit further this way, there's not enough voltage to get it burning even with the ultraviolet light. And if I turn it too far the other way, it's on all the time, of course, because it works just like a neon light bulb that you plug into the wall. It's able to self-start. So basically, I have to tune this thing in until it's just at the point where it's about to go, but not quite enough, and the ultraviolet gets it rolling. Pretty small adjustment. I would say just a few percent plus minus. So the question is, does it have to be ultraviolet light? And the answer is yes. This is actually a great demonstration of the photoelectric effect which means that each photon has a certain energy associated with it, and the lower energy photons, no matter how many of them you have, are not enough to produce an electron when they hit the surface inside there. So just a few UV or high energy photons are enough to do it, uh, but you can have, you know, essentially an infinite number of red photons and it's, it's not going to work. However, there's a pretty cool trick we can play. If you've got one of these 405 blue laser pointers, what we can do is uh, turn the power, turn the voltage back down so that the thing is just about on, but not quite. And then if you hit the flower with a uh, laser pointer, the um, 405 nanometer light is enough to get a little bit of the photoelectric effect going. And you can kind of turn the bulb on one little part at a time. Pretty cool. The green leaves have, a, I think, a zinc sulfide coating on them, which gives them that green color. Otherwise, they'd be uh, similarly orange neon colored. Okay, 